guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Joni Young here, and I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to paint this swan in the water, very reflective and sparkly looking calm water. So you can see I've primed a canvas with black and white to make gray. So I didn't just use gray from the tube, I used a little bit of black and a little bit of white with a large brush like this one, some water, and that's why it looks a little bit uh, darker and lighter and patchier in some areas so I really recommend doing that that's going to add some extra depth and atmosphere to your paintings and it makes for a really nice blurry background too so let's just go ahead and get started you guys I'm going to show you I've got some titanium white and just some loose uh, more of a fluid black paint and I'm going to be using a filbert brush so I'm going to be starting with creating some light in the water I'll just come in with a little bit of white and black more white i'm gonna blend and then flatten my brush to get it really nice and kind of fanned out in that nice filbert shape on the bottom and i'll just start coming in with some lines here And then some little circles for some ripples in the water. So just making some interesting patterns here. Little flat circles. They kind of look like lily pads, but we're not. You could add lily pads to this painting if you wanted. That would look quite pretty. And then see how my brush has less paint on it now, so I'm creating a dry brush effect. This helps to make the water look a little more reflective. Mix those colors up again. So I really just wanted to create little wavy lines. I'm going to go back and reshape my brush when it starts to lose that nice flat shape. And then when I'm running out of paint, I'm going to just take advantage of that and come in scumble, pushing lightly and gently rubbing that paint out onto the canvas. Be sure to go back for a little bit of water when your brush gets too dry. It's best to get a little bit of water before you add more paint onto your brush. You need to go together, the water and the paint need each other to help blend nice and ev evenly and effortlessly. So some areas are gonna be a little bit wider and patchier. I 
And then I'm just going to create these little rings here for some subtle ripples, soft, gentle ripples in the water from our swan. area here we're gonna have a swan so I'll come in with uh, define my shadow and the ripples in the water in a little bit I just want to go around the canvas doing this stage first Losing that flat, skinny shape, so I'm gonna push, wiggle to get that nice thin line back again. It helps to give me more control over the size of the lines that I'm adding. So, this area here, all in here, is where we're gonna have the most light, it's gonna be the brightest. So I'm going to start to build this up and go over top with a dry brush of this light gray. I need a little bit more water to help line that out of my brush. We're going to have some sparkly looking, kind of like little diamonds, sparkles, and glittery looking water down here. So I'm just going to start coming in with little bits, little flicks like this of the white. Just with the tip of my brush. Sometimes just creating short and quick little tiny scoops like that. And I'm going to come in here and be a little bit more generous with my white. No water. There's going to be a few 
little ones along here. I'm going to turn my brush over here, the handle up, just because it's easier for me to have control of paint in this area. Stumble out the remainder of the paint onto where this is a bit darker. And then I'm going to just get that uh, grayish tone that I want so it's not completely white. It'll just make it look like a nice, soft, feathery gray. Okay, I'm going to start coming in here now. With more white, guys. No water on my brush. I'm just looking at light and shadow, thinking about the shapes. They look like little flat circles or ovals. And then if you want to create a little bit of movement, you can kind of have a little flick and then curve up on the end of them. actually really really um, relaxing to do paintings like this I find I, I get lost in working on patterns so I've had a lot of fun over the years painting um, elephants I've painted quite a few elephants so if you guys want to see one of them it's in black and white I've got it on my playlist and I'll leave a or leave a link below for you guys enjoy black and white paintings so I'm gonna scumble and then tap there's more of a white area in here And just two little dabs too and then soften them I'll be coming in with my little liner brush to tweak these a little bit and give them more of a, a starburst look it's just about getting that light and shadow down right now this is just one stage of the painting. I'm going to start on the reflection down here. With little pressure, you just use the tip of your brush and you can create gentle little lines.
We're going to soften some of these areas up that are really dark just by coming in with a thin watered down white, but it's not dripping. Okay, you definitely don't want it dripping. I'm going to leave skinny dark lines for a contrast. And I'm not too worried about if I'm going over those little sparkly star things. I just have those placed there for some guidance right now. I know that I'm going to, like I said earlier, be going over those and making them brighter and have a little bit more sparkle to them. And I'm going to make shorter little movements and slide, lift up slightly, slide. Create some different patterns in the water here. A little bit of light gray again. And it's gonna look lighter when I first put it on and then it'll darken a little bit as it dries. Acrylic paint always does that. around with the shape here a little bit more. Don't forget to go in and layer over. If you've already got a pattern, you can come right back in and over top and readjust it or add to it. added a little bit more water to my brush to loosen up that paint. And I'm just going to paint right over this. It's very thin and transparent, so I'm just going to have a few different layers and tones of gray in there. So you can see I'm leaving this area here so I have room for my spawn. I'm just 
just gonna a few more little white shapes in here, little blobs. So our swan's gonna be right about here, tail, big, big wing, and then curve, curve up. Okay, just so you can kind of get an idea. Really wanna come in with some sparkle in here first before we start the swan. I'm gonna switch over to one of my liner brushes. This is uh, number one. I'm gonna get it wet, and I'm gonna just load the tip of my brush. It's the only part of the brush I wanna be using. And we'll just start creating a whole bunch of little stars. You can have little little dots and dabs as well and make them different sizes and they don't have to be perfect because they're like kind of out of focus and in the background right you're not going to see everything perfectly so you can be really loose with this stage of the painting this area Now what I like to do to make it easier to use a uh, liner brush, and I mentioned this, if it's dry underneath, of course, just place your pinky right there. And that helps to steady your hand and allow you to have that control. So if I was just to try, see I start to shake, because I'm trying to line it up if I don't have my pinky there. So I find it really helps me. And I actually learned that from I don't watch car shows, but my husband is a car fanatic and a lot of uh, pinstripers when they're applying the lines and the, the paint jobs on the cars, that's what they do. So I picked that up, picked something up by watching one of my husband's shows. It's very helpful. That's something, I don't know if the, I read anywhere before or if I've ever seen any other artist kind of mention that or talk about it. So see I'm making sure that I have some really super messy ones in here. And now we're really starting to create a mood aren't we? and paint at your own speed, guys, and your own ability. I tell all my students, you can paint everything and anything in my classes or just in general, but it'll be at your own ability and your own skill level. And you'll just get better and better as a painter and your skill level by taking on something that you don't think that you're even ready or comfortable for. And I think that is the best advice. This is this video is not about art advice, by all means. It's not one of my um, advice videos, but I really know from experience that if I just stayed in that comfortable zone with my paintings years ago, and I never took on things that I didn't know how to paint and that I thought were going to be too hard for me, and they were really hard at first. I mean, I didn't have any art classes, right? I was just doing everything um, on my own. Had little kids that I was raising and I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom and whatever. So I just learned on my own. But, you know, you just have to practice things. You'll get better and better at them. And you you can't grow in anything in life until you uh, move forward and take chances and try things. So, and this, it applies with art. And 
that some of them you can just dab with your little pinky or finger soften right just to create a little bit of a glow but we can go back to that uh, later on and add sort of an afterglow we're going to come inside these areas here that are going to be really bright Create some little wiggles and squiggles here. I don't know if you guys can hear the rain through the, the video, but I've got a tin roof and I love the sound the rain makes when it's hitting the tin roof. It's really relaxing. I love painting on rainy days. So just pulling in little lines. See, I've got quite a bit of paint on my brush here. And you can if you're really careful. I've got a bit of paint on my pinky from resting it there, so I better take that off. Come in with some more bright, bright white in here. Okay, so I think I'm ready. I'm gonna go back and add some more stars later, but I wanna get started. I'm excited to get started on our salon. So I'm gonna be using a uh, filbert brush again. Filbert brushes always work well for me. I think they are very handy little brushes. And I'm gonna take some white. A little bit of black, let's make a medium gray here on the light. I guess it's more leaning more towards the lighter side. It's gonna be lighter than underneath here. Okay, so I'm gonna go across. We've already got that line there naturally. I wasn't planning on that. Take a little bit more white right in here. This area here is gonna be lighter. It's the tail end of our bird. And then with a little bit of black, come right under. It's going to get a little bit of water. Just 
a sort of sort of outline a bit. Got a little bit more black now. So we can have this shadow under here. Take a bit more white. And I'm not even washing my brush in between. I'm just layering right over. And then this wing comes up. I'm going to apply black right underneath here. Make it even darker. the rest. It comes up slightly on an angle right here on the end. Put a little bit of water on my brush so I can create these wiggly looking ripples. A little bit more water, see? So it's nice and runny to work with. I'm gonna just come right in over top of some of these here. Gonna wrap it around here and here. A little bit more black. Come underneath here again, slightly up. A little bit more in here. It's a little bit edgier and wiggly looking. And a little shadow here. And we're gonna have those ripples, but I'm gonna come in with more white rather than um, the black because it's supposed to be the darkest right in here. Take a little bit of white. Kind of wiggle that out. Wiggle and squiggle. white, a little bit of that gray. Just 
tumbling and traveling around with the brush. Okay, and I'm going to come in with my wings here. So it's bright white behind the wings. So the most of this um, swan is in shadow. We've got this light that's going to just be filtering. in from behind here. So we've got some feathers here. We're kind of getting lost in with the, the background. I'm kind of just going to outline these. And then down, kind of across. And up and over. Just think of kind of a backwards two. Looks like a hook. I'll take some more black now. It's really in shadow here. As we start up at the base, it's pretty in shadow. I'm going to come in with white to outline it on the top here. So it's kind of a little bit of a line like that. And then it'll come down darker here. I'm going to go over that with black, but I just wanted to make that stand out so you guys could see the shape we're going for. I'm going to really exaggerate that. Right, it goes back and then it almost meets, almost meets in with the feathers. We're going to have some bright white hitting the top here from the light coming in. And we'll scumble out. Some of that white there. And I'm going to turn my brush and do a tight little wiggle up. Then I'll take some more black. And start adding the beak that's, we know it's not black, but just for this photo or this painting and the photo I'm looking at, it's in, so it's just in silhouette, right? It will be slightly curving up there and then a little bit lighter, but not much.
there's going to be light on the other side. And it's a little bit bumpy because of the feathers and the texture. And then it kind of is like a little ripply looking here, like really ripply. So I just shake and wiggle. And then flatten it out here and come as close as I can to the neck. I'm going to come down here low, bring a little, little lump that comes up right there. Bring this down a little lower. And start coming in front. We have those filtered ones in the back now. We can start layering over, guys. And then little scoops that are really tight together like this. For those other feathers. And then cut in with a little bit of white to outline some of them to create that filtered light a little bit more. It all depends on how, how much light you want. You'll have to go over a few times for your real brights that you want, the brightest highlights. And it's kind of reflecting here, casting a glow right there. with a little bit of black. Scoop down from the bottom. I wanna make sure I don't see those lines in the back the water ripples. I'm going to add a little bit more white right in here because the light is hitting this area. We'll see where else I need some. Again, that highlight. Right in there. Make this a bit brighter. And then 
other you know, little areas here. Little flicks or flecks, I should say, of the random little dark area. To really make this light area pop out, I'm going to add a little bit of black right behind it. And then gently kind of pull and flick up like that. making it a little bumpy because the texture of the little feathers on its neck. See how I come right close? And with a little bit of black, create those little, little tiny ripples that are all wiggly like that. Just make these a little bit darker, stand out a little bit more. I'm going to stumble out the rest of that black that I have, which isn't a lot. Just so we get that kind of gradation. And then come back in here, make that a little bit darker, the top of the beak. Smooth it out. It's curves over a little bit like that. So down. And then it's darker here. Remember I said I was going to go over that. I just wanted to show you the, the shape. Bit more dry brushing with black. Okay, back to some white. Scoop and slight little, little scoop up in there and a little highlight, very subtle. Really, not really a highlight, but just a little bit lighter gray there. Now 
we'll start to add some more little ripples and patterns in the water. I'm going to just create a lot of little quick dots and dabs here for some more sparkle. And then really bright. And then behind or around and in between some of the feathers. And then just dry brush in here for a lighter gray ripple effect. So we have all these different tones going on. Okay, it rounds out over here into a bunch of little feathers. And then you'll want to soften with either a brush or just use your finger. I'm going to take a little bit of black here. Just a little bit of a light gray Come around the top, very thin. And a little black dab for an eye that we can't really see. In fact, I don't know if I'm gonna, I don't know if I wanna have that there. I think it kinda is just more in silhouette there. So I think I'll just kinda camouflage that a little bit and bring back this shadow. Whoops, need a little bit more dark gray. again on the top. Thin outline there. And a light, gentle little tap. Thank you. 
Losing so much weight in this painting. Some more feathers that come up along the side here. And back there. Like I said, they just get lost. They're all just getting lost in here. All that light. create a bunch of little swiggles. So just pulling and wiggling with my brush. Really skinny lines close together. A little bit more gray. And between and around some of these feathers before I come in with more of my white. So now I've got more white. And this will just make them stand out a little bit better. now so for some more white I'm going to turn my brush this way and kind of drag it along here like I would use a palette knife so barely touching you can even kind of a little tap and drag tap wiggle and drag That's going to make it look even more natural for the, the highlights. Look at all those little flecks in the water.
a little bit more right in here before I call this one done. A bit of black too. Like right in, oh, right about here. You want to add a few little flicks of uh, of some black for some shadow in the ripples, and you want it to look a little bit more natural. This is a fun little technique, super easy. I think I'm just going to come right in here, right underneath, in between where I have it really ripply from the white. I need to match that. And there's one more in here. And then just a couple like I had earlier, but I want to make these a little bit more prominent. Okay guys, well I'm going to call this one all done. I'm going to do a couple more stars probably and uh, I just see a little area right in here. I must have put my my pinky there. If you enjoyed watching this video, give it a like, leave a comment below and uh, a happy painting guys. I'll see you all next time really soon. Bye!